take full responsibility for all of your actions. Every single one of them, no exceptions, no excuses, no lying to yourself, pretending that it didn't happen or that you haven't done something that you have, that's not gonna work. The more you stay in that mindset, the more you will continue to be enslaved and even worse, you will contribute to everybody else being enslaved as well. Let me ask you a very important question. Do you want to be free? Do you have a true and honest and sincere desire to experience freedom in your life? This is not a trivial or unimportant question. This is probably one of the most important questions that we can ask ourselves. However, it's also true that if you're being honest with yourself, then you, like most people, will probably respond to that question almost in an automated knee-jerk way and say, yes, of course I want to be free. How ridiculous is that question? Well, as I'm going to explain and share on today's video, although we do have that innate and inherent desire towards freedom, we often don't really understand what it actually means to be free and what is the price that must be paid in order to be free. So perhaps it will help if we break that down a little bit. Freedom is not just the ability, for example, to buy a lot of things or a lot of experiences in the world because we have a lot of money. This is a, a common understanding of what it means to be free. Freedom is often associated with some kind of financial freedom, meaning access to an abundance of money and resources so that we can literally buy what we want, we can travel what we want. And so ostensibly, it may seem like someone who does have a lot of money is free or at least relatively free. And on some level that is true. However, I would like to remind you that even if you're able to buy a first class ticket anywhere in the world you wanna go, you still need permission from authority to travel there. And if you do not obtain the necessary permission vis-a-vis -vis passports and visas, then you will be denied access to places that you may want to go. And if you attempt to go there anyway, then you will be met with increasing resistance and even violence in order to stop you from doing so. So I think you and I can agree that if that is the case and you are doing something that you have a natural right to do, you're not harming anyone by going to these places, then you're not truly free. And I can give many, many examples. And we could even go so far as to say that even if you yourself experience a relative degree of freedom in your life, as long as the majority of people in the world are not free, are you really free? Can you really live free in a world where people are enslaved? Is that truly possible? So just consider that. Having said that, what is actual freedom? What is freedom? Freedom is the expression of your infinite value as a human being. That same infinite value that you have, I also have, and every human being has. We all have that infinite value and therefore Everybody has infinite value and nobody is more valuable or less valuable than anyone else inherently from birth. Freedom, therefore, is being able to enjoy the fruits of this amazing gift that we've been given from the creator of this universe, which is called the gift of free will. The gift of free will is that gift which allows us to decide at any given moment how we want to act and behave. We get to choose. We can even choose poorly. We can choose wisely, we can choose foolishly at any given moment because we always have the choice. And the degree to which we are free is the degree to which we can express that free will so that we can continue to learn and grow and also create and help to create greater and greater realities through our own abilities, through our own actions in this world. Because this world ultimately is a reflection of our labor, our work of what we do, what we do and also what we say, because what we say is also important. So true freedom means that we get to exercise our free will choices of behavior and we are not limited in doing so. We are not told that we must obey an external authority. And even if we are told, knowing that we are free, we simply do not obey because we are free. We can think of it as kind of a, a cosmic adulthood. So what do I mean by cosmic adulthood? 
You know what I mean when I say adulthood or becoming an adult. Everybody understands this naturally and intuitively. From a physical perspective, becoming an adult means that physically your body has passed through several phases. You've passed from childhood and then you go into what's called puberty and early adulthood. And then at some point you come into full maturity, usually what is considered to be in the late teens or early 20s of one life. And now you're coming into physical adulthood. You have become physically adult. And in the eyes of man-made law, in the eyes of authority, when you reach that age, you now become responsible for your actions as an adult. This is what is considered physical adulthood. However, one can be, can very easily become a physical adult and spiritually, consciously, or cosmically still be a child or even an infant. And this depends on their level of consciousness and their level of understanding of what it takes to be free. Because freedom ultimately is personal responsibility. And personal responsibility, complete responsibility for one's actions and behaviors, this is cosmic adulthood. This is true adulthood, spiritually speaking. And this is the price that we must pay to be free. Because there is no freedom without sacrifice. And the sacrifice is you must assume 100% responsibility for all of your choices of behavior and the consequences therein. And you do not get to delegate or attempt to delegate those responsibilities to any other authority, to any parent figure or authority, which is basically the parent figure from a cosmic perspective, from a species-wide perspective, instead of from the individual perspective. At some point, as you matured from being a physical child into a physical adult, your parents, if they were parenting you correctly, they started to guide you to take on more and more responsibility for your actions and behaviors. And at some point you realized that you no longer needed to, to rely on them either for physical protection, but even for guidance, because you now had developed yourself to a point where you were able to make your own choices in life. And this is really the definition of true cosmic adulthood. It's not just that you're old enough to vote or do other things that man-made laws would tell you that you have a quote unquote right to do, but actually you know that you now have full responsibility for your actions and therefore you have earned, you have merited freedom. Freedom for yourself and also by extension freedom for all of us because your actions are not just in a bubble, they are taking place in the reality that we all share together. So the only way that we can be free is when you and I and every being, every human being alive takes 100% responsibility for the consequences of our behavior choices. We do not attempt to lie about it. We do not attempt to brush it under the carpet. We don't tell ourselves stories. We don't try to ignore the consequences of what we've done, but we always assume full responsibility. And even better, of course, before we act, we always put our choices to a certain litmus test, which we can call a moral filter. And we really think carefully and we say, is this the right choice? Am I doing the right thing? And then we choose rightly more often than not so that we can reap that benefit so that we can be free. But freedom also has another price is that we have to accept the dangers and we also have to accept the fact that there are beings in the world who will want to harm us. And there are forces in the world that can harm us. And we're not automatically going to be safe and protected at all times. And we will need to take action to defend ourselves, both physically and psychologically. And we will need to take action at times to protect the integrity of our body. And we won't be able to escape that because that is a natural consequence of living in this manifested 3D reality where physical forces are also in play. So that is part of freedom as well is knowing that we can lose our lives. We can be subject to dangers and we can maximize our experience by being as prudent as we can and making the best choices we can at any given time, but also accepting responsibility and quote unquote, cleaning up the mess when we make a mistake. So if we do something wrong and it, we recognize after the fact that we didn't make the best choice, maybe it was through imprudence, maybe it was we outright harmed someone whether we realized it at the time or not, 
then we simply take responsibility and we do what's possible to clean up the mess, to rectify the wrongdoing, to make amends, to certainly learn the lesson from that, and then to adjust our behaviors and our actions moving forward so that we don't go back and repeat the same mistakes again. But unless and until you are willing to accept 100% responsibility for your life and the consequences of your behavior choices, including in your health, in your relationships, in your finances, in social interactions, and even in, in any dimension, then I would say that you don't truly want to be free and it's possible that you don't truly understand what it means to be free. You haven't fully accepted it or you're just not willing to do what it takes to be free. You're not willing to pay that price, make that sacrifice in order to be free. And that is a choice. And that again goes back to the gift of free will is we do have the choice to be a slave. We do have a choice to be under authority. And that's why authority always seeks our consent. That's why all man-made institutions and all systems of control are always asking us to agree to be the charge, to be the ward of that system. For the most part, there are exceptions. And of course, these systems will use violence to enforce themselves. But ultimately, from the get-go, they are seeking our consent. And that is because we have free will and we need to choose either freedom or slavery. We get to choose. You get to choose and so do I and we all together make that choice. And the net result is always the, the sum of our individual choices rolled up into this reality. So if you want to be free, take full responsibility for all of your actions. Every single one of them, no exceptions, no backing down, no excuses, no bullshit, no lying to yourself, no denial, no being in denial, no brushing anything under the carpet, pretending that it didn't happen or that you haven't done something that you have. No, none of that will fly. That's not going to work. The more you stay in that mindset, the more you will continue to be enslaved. And even worse, you will contribute to everybody else being enslaved as well because we're not living in a bubble. So learn to take full responsibility. Where is a good way to start? Like what are some good places to start if this is something that you need to work on? Well, beyond the actual philosophy, beyond the understanding that I've been sharing on this video and all my videos, it is important to put this into practice. A great way, perhaps, that I would suggest based on my own experience would be to look at your health. Look at the consequences of your actual health and well-being and identify ways that you may be actually contributing to having poor health through your nutrition, through the things that you eat. Are you lying to yourself, for example, and saying that you can somehow get away with drinking Coca-Cola and other things like that and somehow not have an effect on your being? And I'm talking about any type of soda, whether it be a regular soda, a diet soda. Do you really think that that's true? Can you really get away with consuming large amounts of sugar in your body or other substances and not have a negative consequence on your body? Or are you ultimately responsible for what may seem like chronic illnesses, but are actually imbalances due to poor nutrition? So I want to encourage you to look at that. Again, this is something that I've done and I've shared about this extensively on other videos and I will continue to share is that I've been able to heal myself and generate healing in my own body by taking full responsibility and not seeking, for example, a doctor or help in the medical system or a medication or a drug that somehow is going to save me from the consequences of poor choices of nutrition and diet that I made. So this is a great place to start because we all have complete control over what we consume. You know, maybe related to that, do you really think that there's not going to be a consequence, for example, to brushing your teeth with fluoride toothpaste? Do you really think that you're going to be able to get away with putting all these chemicals on your body vis-a-vis -vis the quote-unquote cosmetics and beauty products that many times have all kinds of harmful substances in them and that's not going to somehow have a, a consequence when you're applying them to the largest organ in your body, which is, of course, your skin. So taking responsibility means that you stop lying to yourself about this and say, yes, the things that I consume, the things I put in my mouth, 
even the things I don't swallow, but I'm ingesting or putting on my body, they can and do have a consequence. And I'm going to accept the responsibility for that. And if I'm having health issues, then rather than going off and seeking a pill or a potion or some kind of magic spell, then I'm going to actually take responsibility and change my behaviors accordingly. So this is a great way to start because until you have that mental equipment, until you have that interface through which consciousness experiences its reality, which is your mind and your brain, until you have that in order, all this other stuff that I'm explaining to you is just going to go in one ear and out the other. You're not going to be able to absorb it and you're certainly not going to be able to implement it. So I would say that if you want to experience what it means to take full responsibility, then taking full responsibility for your own health and your health situation is a great place to start. I would recommend no other place. Once you've done that, then you can start to tackle the other areas of your life that are also important. For example, your relationships. Your relationship with yourself, of course, is always the first one, but also relationships that you have with others. For example, you may have a spouse or a partner or a significant other. That would be a great place to start to evolve your relationship with that person. And they may or may not be ready for that, but when you start to take more responsibility, that cannot not have an effect on your relationship. And if that relationship needs to evolve or if that relationship comes to an end because the other party simply isn't ready to evolve the way you are, then those will be natural consequences that you can accept. But being free, you understand that you can't control that other person. All you can do is control your own behaviors and those relationships will start to evolve. So that, that's a great way to look at it. And even the, way you, even the way you look at people that come into your life that you don't necessarily have a pre-existing relationship with, how you interact with, for example, the new people that come into your life. This will also evolve as you take more responsibility for your own actions. Then you can start to take responsibility for if you're, for example, if you have a job or if you work in some organization or you're working with others, you're doing some kind of labor, whether physical or mental or all or combined, you can start to look at the ways in which you take responsibility for your actions and behaviors within the context of that. And then you can start to evolve your interactions and then you will probably see that your success in that will grow or you may simply outgrow whatever you're currently doing and find yourself naturally evolving to, to take on greater and greater roles and responsibilities, maybe within the same organization, maybe even within a new organization as you're evolving and assuming more responsibility for your behavior choices. So this is how it works. So step by step, step by step, always starting with the self, always starting with the relationship with yourself, always starting with the way you treat yourself and the choices you make that affect your, yourself first. And then by extension, you will start to manifest correct behaviors and better interactions and dynamics with those around you. And you will start to see that you will start to experience freedom, perhaps with a lowercase f and not a capital F still because it's still evolving, but you will start to experience relative freedom in your own life. You will be free, if not free to travel around the world because this is something we need to manifest together by casting off the shackles of authority, but at least within the domain of your own life, you will be free, free from fears, free from worry, free from feeling as though there are some kind of external forces that are running your life, ruining your health and so forth. And rather, you will be the master. You will become the sovereign of your own life. And that is the first step to freedom with a capital M. And that is why we can never truly be free as a species until each and every one of us, or at the very least, the majority of us, take 100% responsibility for our actions and behaviors. So I hope this has been helpful. Go and see how you can apply that in your own life. And then I'd love to hear from you and see what the results were. Thank you very much.